Radhe Radhe everyone. So we continue to read from Saints of Raja. We are at page number 383, chapter 38. The story of Chota Baba. Chota means small in all mm -hmm. There is also one Chota Baba now. <laughs> With Vinod Baba always, I don't know if anyone follow Vinod Baba live class. There is one <laughs> like this high. He gives kata also, they call him Chota Baba. <laughs> <laughs> so this last story is just something. Uh, there is some printing mistake always. So we will just, <laughs> like now, Chota Baba was born. The first sentence. So there is some printing mistake here and there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Keep in mind, yeah. Chota Baba was born because he was too young. He began to be called Chota Baba, young Babaji, and was known by that name until the end. Chota Baba was completely sold out to Jai Krishna Das Baba on account of his sweet and loving behavior. He accepted him as his Shiksha Guru and decided never to leave him. Jai Krishna Das deputed him in the service of his deity Radha Madan Mohan. Jai Krishna Das was so much pleased by his service and his spontaneous loving attitude towards the deity that he decided to train him in Raganuga way of bhakti, which consists in spontaneous loving service of Radha Krishna, practiced with imaginary transcendental body under the guidance of the Guru. He asked him one day, Do you have your Guru Pranalika? There is a footnote. Guru Pranalika explanation. A written statement provided by the Guru in which are given the name, age, color, dress, etc. of the transcendental body of the disciple, along with a particular kind of service of Radha Krishna assigned to him. Similar details about transcendental bodies of the Guru and the Gurus preceding him on that line are also given. He said, I do not know what Guru Pranalika is. Baba explained to him what it meant and said, You have to go to Navadvip once to get the Guru Pranalika from your Guru. It is necessary for Raghunuga Bhajan, which I want you now to adopt. He also explained to him the importance and sweetness of Raghunuga Bhajan. But Chota Baba was so much attached to Jai Krishna Das Baba that he could not think of leaving him even for a moment. He regarded his company and service more important and enjoyable than any other kind of bhajan. He could not say anything in reply and expressed his unwillingness to go to Navadvip by shedding tears. Baba impressed upon him the necessity and importance of Raganuga Bhajan 
again and again and somehow made him agree to go to Navadvip to bring his Guru Pranalika. One had to go to Hatharas to board the train from, ben from Bengal. The next day, Chota Baba started for Hatharas. Jai Krishna Das Baba bade him farewell. Both parted with tears. <coughs> While Chota Baba was going to Hatharas, tears incessantly flowed from his eyes. As he approached Hatharas station, his heart began to sink. He knew that as soon as he would board the train, his soul would leave the body. He was in a pitiable situation. Obedience to the command of the Guru meant death. Disobedience also meant death. He began to pray to Radharani and Vrinda Devi and say, O oh Radhe, O oh Vrinda, you must be aware of my plight. I have taken shelter under your feet in the expectation that you will be merciful to me and will one day accept me in the service of your lotus feet. <clears throat> Why are you pushing me away from your feet? At least bless me so that I die before the fateful hour of my boarding the train arrives. Radharani and Vrinda Devi heard his prayers. As soon as he reached the station, he breathed a sip of relief to find that the train had already left. He decided to go talk to Jai Krishna Das Baba and tell him how it uh, how he was prevented from going to Navadvip by Radharani and Vrinda Devi. Jai Krishna Das Baba was already repentant for having asked Chota Baba to go to Navadvip for bringing his Guru Pranali. For Vrinda Devi had scolded him in a dream and said, why did you send him to Navadvip when his Guru Pranali is already there on the altar of Radha Madan Mohan? Jai Krishna Das was surprised to find the Guru Pranali on the altar. He was also happy to see how Brinda Devi had showered her mercy upon Chota Baba. But there was no end to his grief when he thought that Chota Baba must have already gone a long way and would soon reach the station in time for the train. He began to pray to Brinda Devi to see that he did not reach in time and was compelled to come back. He was praying to Rinda Devi and weeping, when in the evening he saw to his surprise Chota Baba coming back to his ashram. He ran towards him and embraced him. Before he could obey Sense and apologize for not being able to reach Hatteras in time for the train. There was no end to the happiness of Chota Baba when he was told about the mercy of Vrinda Devi 
and her discovery and presentation of his Guru Pranali. He began to practice Raganuga Bhajan under the guidance of Jai Krishna Das Baba. After some time, Jai Krishna Das Baba left the body. Before leaving, he said to Chota Baba, Continue your bhajan. Do not leave Braja even for a day. Radharani will surely be pleased and give you darshan. Chota Baba continued his bhajan. He became old, but he did not have the darshan of Radha or Krishna. The pain of separation became unbearable to him. One day, two children, one boy and the other girl, both about six or seven years old, came to the kutir of Baba and said, Baba, give us water to drink. Baba came out of his kutir and saw them. He was charmed by their beauty. He had never seen such beautiful children before. Baba poured water from his karava into the cupped hands of the boy and he drank. Then the boy said, Baba, give water to my wife as well. Baba laughed and said, Your wife? Both of you are so young, you're married. No, Baba, we are not yet married, but we shall be married someday. Oh, you shall be married. But how can she be your wife until you're married? The boy said, Baba, you do not know. The girl said, No, Baba, he is telling a lie. I came to the forest to pick flowers. He beguiled, beguiled, anyone knows this word? Beguiled. You see, sorry, but I think you know the words. Like cheating, mm -hmm. kind of cheating. Trick me, he tricked me. He tricked me, he be beguiled me by his talks and brought me here. Baba then began to pour water into her hands in perfectly cupped. The water fell on the ground and she could not drink. Baba said to the boy, Your wife does not know how to cup her hands. She's too simple, said the boy. He put his own cupped hands close to her mouth to make, uh, to make her drink and she drank. But then said, uh, Baba then said to the boy, Lala, it is now getting dark. You reach home. The boy took the girl by the hand and began to go. Baba continued to look at them like one spellbound. They also turned repeatedly and looked at Baba with a tricking smile as they went. They had gone only a small distance when they suddenly disappeared. At once, a new consciousness dawned upon Baba. He was filled with a strange feeling of bewilderment, happiness and sorrow. 
he realized that the two children were no other than the two divinities of his heart, whom he had worshipped so long. They had thus appeared because he had desired that they once drank water from his hands, as Krishna had drank from the hand of Jai Krishna Das. This was the story in the beginning, Jai Krishna Das. I don't know if you remember, we read when Krishna Balaram came to the Jai Krishna Das Baba Kutir to ask for water. They were just covered boys from the outside. And Jai Krishna Das started putting water on the cupped hands of uh, Krishna, who is, was looking just a normal cover boy, and all the water was falling from uh, the hands, like was passing through. But he did not even realize because he was just so charmed by Krishna's beauty. And then when they left, all the water down, he said, how it happened? He was drinking all the water. <laughs> and then realization came. It was happy. He was happy at their disappearance. Sorry. He was happy at their appearance, but unhappy at their disappearance and his inability to recognize them. <coughs> their disappearance after appearing only for a short while made him feel the pangs of separation as he had never felt before. He wept and wept until sleep came and gave him relief. In sleep, Radha Krishna again appeared to him in a dream. They said, Baba, continue your bhajan. In due course, we shall give Saksat Darshan, which is direct darshan in true or undisguised form. In due course, we shall give Saksat Darshan to you. Chota Baba must have been blessed by their darshan again, but who knows when and how? Chota Baba Ki! Yeah. 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 <laughs> Maduri ha il microfono chiuso. Mi sentite? Ok. Excuse me, uh, uh, I lost the uh, Italian room. Anyone wants to say something? Let's continue. Mm. So next story, chapter 39. Karta Krishnadas Baba. Karta Krishnadas Baba had taken initiation from some saint in the line of disciplic succession from Nityananda. Mm -hmm. Siddha Krishnadas Baba of Govardhan was his Siksha Guru. He became Siddha like him by practicing sadhana under his guidance. He was called Siddha Baba because he had become Siddha in the Upasana of Astakalya Lila. 
He was called Guti Guti Kabale Baba because he had expanded on Bengali on the Sanskrit Gutika of Siddha Krishna Das Baba of Govardhan and given it the form in which it is available today. He was called Karta. Karta in Bengali means manager, governor, or head of a society or institution. Because he was, on account of his spiritual stature, the natural head or leader of the Vaishnav society of his time. All the sadhus and Vaishnavas of Braja took instruction from him. They could not do anything which was not approved by him. Karta Krishnadas Baba lived for 104 years. He did not let a single second pass without the service of Radha Krishna or the Vaishnavas. He hardly had any time for his own self. He did not have time even for Madhukari. He went for Madhukari only once in two or three days. If he had any leisure after doing his Seva Puja, he spent it in making Gadadi or copying Gulika for the Sadhus. Anyone knows? Gadadi, Gulika? These two terms. Gulika or Gulika? Yeah, with the help, let's we'll see if there is any glossary. No. Okay. But even, uh, but even then, though he seemed outwardly to be occupied with these activities, inwardly he was always absorbed in the meditation of the Leela of Radha and Krishna. Sometimes he go do absorbed that he lost outward consciousness and the external activities remained suspended for hours. Once a Kirtan singer came from Bengal to serve the sadhus of Vrindavan through Kirtan. The sadhus said, If you can please Karta Baba of Govardhan through your kirtan, you should think that you have done some real service. He went to Karta Baba and requested him to hear his kirtan. Asking if anyone like to do henna. <laughs> no, no, it's no. Fine. Okay. So he went to Karta Baba, the Kirtan singer, and requested him to hear his Kirtan. Baba had at that time taken his bath and was going to do tilak on his body. He said politely, Baba, where is the time to do kirtan? On his insistence, however, he said, Very well, while I do tilak, you do kirtan. He, he started kirtan. Baba poured some water on his left hand and began to rub on it the earth of Radhakund for Tilak. Kirtan was about the Leela relating to the first meeting between Radha and Krishna. 
as the Kirtaniya sang, Baba saw the Leela enacted before his mind. He was so absorbed in the Leela that in rubbing the earth, his hand sometimes moved, sometimes stopped. Ultimately, it stopped altogether. Baba went into a stupor and his mind was totally fixed on the Leela. The Kirtan began at 8 o'clock in the morning and continued until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. When the Kirtan stopped, Tilak still remained undone. The saints of Raja of that time used to send their disciples to Karta Krishnadas Baba for training in Astakalila Smarana, meditation on the Astakalila. But Baba did not give training to everyone. He trained only those who had risen above the ordinary level and acquired control control over the senses. Therefore, before accepting anyone for training, he kept him in his ashram for some time in order to test his eligibility. Once a sadhu came to him and requested for shiksha in Astakalila Smarana. He received him well and gave him a place to stay in his ashram. At night, he gave him to eat pieces of bread, chapati probably, which he had received in Madhukari three days before, after soaking them in water to make them soft. Then he went and sat elsewhere to watch his reaction from a distance. He could understand from his facial expression that he was not eligible for Asta Kalila Smarana. <laughs> so the Sadhu approached to Baba mm -hmm. for Asta Kalila Smarana training. Mm -hmm. guidance mm -hmm. and it was said that it was not giving to everyone that only to those who already acquired full control over the senses so also on the taste like so he made a test to him and he gave him to eat chapati three four days old oh. so very dry but he soaked them in water to make little soft and then gave to him but of course they're not so nice i think <laughs> <laughs> but he should not be like uh, be disturbed if he acquired control over his senses, right? Oh, but he was then he put himself in a side to see the uh, the face of this sadhu eating the chapati. And from his uh, face reaction, he could understand that he that he was displeased by eating the rotten chapati. So it means that he did not acquire yet control over the senses. So this made him. Uh, realized that he could not give training. Wow. It's so easy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not all for granted, no? <laughs> That's why Guru is so merciful. <laughs> you see around. <laughs> no, but just giving, like, without seeing the qualification. Otherwise, no Italian like to come when this food is so dry. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a little smart movie. Yes, that is me. <laughs> this is for questions, okay? He came back and pretending to have given him the stale bread by mistake, Chapati said, "Oh, what have I done?" I have given the stale bread. 
he gave him fresh bread to eat, and himself ate the stale. <laughs> After some time, he said to him, You are still the slave of your tongue. As long as a man is attached to the word of senses and is given to sense enjoyment, he is not qualified for Raganuga Bhajan. You should continue to practice Vaidhi Bhakti. By the practice of Vaidhi Bhakti, when your heart is purified and your desire for sense enjoyment is completely eliminated, you should come to me for Raganuga Bhajan. So long as Siddha Krishna Das Baba of Govardhan was alive, Siddha Karta Krishna Das Baba lived in Govardhan near the Bhajan Kutir of Sanatan Goswami in the bank of Manasiganga. The place where he lived is even today called Siddha Baba Kitahura after his name as Siddha Baba. After the passing away of Siddha Krishnadas Baba of Govardhan, <coughs> Karta Krishnadas Baba shifted to Nutangera in Radhakundi. Once the ownership of Radhakund became a subject of dispute, between the Bengal sadhus of Radhakund and the Brajavasis. <coughs> the Brajavasis said, We shall not let the Bengali sadhus touch the water of Radhakund. The Bengali sadhus went to Kartababa and asked him what they should do. He replied, We shall not fight with the Brajavasis. If Radharani does not want that we should not touch in the Kund, we shall not. The sadhus obeyed. On the Krishna Asnami day of the month of Kartik, bath in Radhakund has special spiritual importance. <coughs> On that day, Baba became restless for bath in Radhakund. He sat on the bank of Radhakun near the Samadhi of Raghunath Das Goswami and said prayerfully to Radharani, Merciful Radhe, I know that it must be on account of some offense committed by us that you have deprived us of the privilege of bathing in your kund. But if today you kindly arrange somehow to send me only a handful of water from the kund, I would sprinkle it on my body and be blessed. At that time came from village Kunjar eight or ten Brajavasis with staff in their hands. While they were taking off their clothes to bathe in Radhakund, they saw Baba sitting aside and shedding tears. They said, Baba, why are you sitting aside and shedding tears? The moon has come up and it is time to bathe. Baba told them about the dispute with the Brajavasis and they resolved not to let the Bengali sadhus bathe in Radhakund. They shouted together, Baba, you must bathe. We shall see who prevents you from bathing. Baba refused to bathe, but they forcibly took him into the Kund 
en maiden bath. The Brajabasis of Radhakund raised much hue and cry, but they could not do anything because they feared the Brajabasis of Kunjar. After the Brajavasis of Kunjar had gone, the Sadhus apprehended that the Brajavasis of Radakund might start violence. But the same night, Radharani said to the Brajavasis in a dream, Radakund is my Kund. The Sadhus also are my own. Who are you to prevent them from bathing? Next morning, the Brajavasis spoke to one another about the dream each one had seen. They understood that they had committed an offense against Radharani and the Bengali Sarus. They went and fell at the feet of Karta Baba and prayed for pardon. Karta Krishna Das Baba lived in Nutangera for 10 or 12 years, after which he passed away. His samadhi is there. Karta Krishna Das Baba Ki <coughs> Should something work? Hmm? Some feeling? Oh, give us. Yeah. Okay. May I ask you something? Okay, okay. I'm um, sorry. Oh, you, you? It's not so important, maybe, but uh, do you think it's uh, from this moment we we are also allowed to pay, to take bath in Radakund? Was this, for example, the point, the moment that we are also allowed now? Otherwise, we would not have been allowed, I think. No? We are not Bengali, but even I mean, worse. <laughs> yeah, there might be like in Jagannath Puri in the temple that no, uh, out, uh, not foreigners are allowed. There might be that before in Radakund here is saying that uh, only Brajavasis could bathe in Radakun. So, yeah, it might be that this is the turning point. Now, uh, for two weeks, Jayana uh, and I was, we was in Radakun together. We was together in Radha, Radakun with a group. Jayananda Ji also, and we come back uh, the, I don't know, this is maybe not a question, but it is go over the obstacle with bath in, in Radakund, and we go to, to uh, Gurudev, and we women was, was not in take a bath, uh, another take a bath, and I don't really understand, but Gurudev say it's not so good when we bath in Radakund, but I don't know, what, mm. uh, he, it's maybe a worrying, but it's a little, little to worry now, but I don't know. I, I want to ask again him over this. Okay. Maybe it's better, and then I can. Maybe he meant something. But what's like meaning? What have? One time he, he, he was. Uh, take the rasa. Time. He say, take the rasa. He say. Yeah, one time was Kartik time. Uh, actually, it was the betting day of Radakun, hmm. or last time. Hmm. And we were in Radakun with Gurudev. It was the first day Gurudev met to uh, Manidhi Swami. Uh -huh. Then he went to him. Mm -hmm. We were a big group. And uh, when Gurudev met to Manidhi Swami, mm -hmm. of course, Gurudev would tell you that it was so great and high and Manidhi Swami the same. But Gurudev was very, like, so humble to him. And after then we came out from the uh, from his uh, residency, then Gurudev said uh, that he has really taken bath in Radakun just by meeting a sadhu who is a rasika and who 
gave him the feeling, the real feeling of Radakun. So I would have said that is the real bad and not what physically people are doing because it was the day of Balastami. Mm. So maybe he meant something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, it still he says that the story and that is the that is the the real bad the generic one. Mahabala wants to also say something then I yes. listen. Yes. Well, I don't really know much about this whole thing, but I wanted to ask you, maybe you, some of you know, that um, for some reason I've heard something that our, um, like, we here are connected more into the Leela that take part on the Yamuna. And... Uh, not around the, those kunjas who are that are at Radha Kund. I'm not really familiar with this details of it, but if any one of you know maybe more details, you could maybe uh, say something. And and for some reason, I also wanted to ask that you see none of us wear Radha Kund tilak, but white. Tilak also also Radha Govinda Das Babaji is seen on the pictures always wearing white tilak. And I really didn't know why, but somebody mentioned to me like one little detail that because there is something related to this idea that they are participating in the Leelas on the Yamuna, not on Radha Kund. And these Leelas are taking place at night. And Radha Kund Leelas are at daytime. So... Um, Somebody who was like our Sangha or something? Um, I think it's important to know that. I think, I'm not sure, but maybe, maybe, maybe La Bangalatika knows something because she's painting for some reason, I don't know how, both of her and myself, whenever we uh, meditate, we get, we end up near the Yamuna. <laughs> and uh, um, she was painting always this, if you see the, the pictures there, uh, they are always Yamuna River. And uh, for some reason, all the Leelas are taking part, taking place at the Yamuna. And and that's why we were curious, but I don't know how I got this uh, information. So I was thinking that maybe maybe you some of you know better. Maybe why this technical detail? Why this? Why not, <laughs> why not Radha? With us, maybe we can ask him. And he yes, can maybe maybe can. maybe he can. Guru Dev is here. I'm is not that? sure. Because I did not see otherwise. Yeah, it just yeah. was. <laughs> It just appeared. <laughs> yeah, I was tracking it. Yeah. One second before it was here. Okay. You don't like this whole topic, I don't know. <laughs> well, I, th I think Rob, uh, uh, regard. He, he, ah, he's here. He, wow, oh, good oh, day. Yes. Oh, yeah, here. Ask him. Ask him. Did you, uh, you did you hear? You have the mic. No, you keep because you will ask again. No? No, I don't know. I don't even know how to formulate the question, actually. Maybe he heard you. You can ask him. Gurudev, did you hear me? No. no. We can't hear him. Rade? Oh, you nice. hear? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now it's okay. Hearing. Yes. Rade, Rade. So, so, uh, uh, now you're Rade, Rade, Mahababa, we heard perfectly your question. Ah, okay, okay. In, in Gurudev's room. Yes, perfectly. It, it, it is very clear. 
And Gurudev asked me to say something about this. It's okay? You hear me? Yes, we hear you. Okay. Because my voice is broken and so what to do? I have to fulfill his desire. So, uh, by Radhika's mercy and the mercy of our Guru Manjari, we received our eternal place, our eternal kunja. And this kind of kunja is somewhere around, depends from person to person, mostly, mostly, around Radha Kunda. So this is our eternal address, eternal home. So all pastimes which are going in Radha Kunda are the pastimes where Manjaris are very intensively uh, engaged. Uh, in the pastimes of Yamuna, the presence of Manjari is notable. We can hear about that, we can listen about that, but the pastimes of Manjaris, yeah. sorry. Uh, uh, sorry, the pastimes of Radha and Mohan is there, and mostly of them are Sakis who are around this their pastimes. They are nourishing the pastimes of Radha Kunda. Of course, in a, around Yamuna, there is a different kunjas. Everywhere is a different kunjas. But in the moment when Radha and Mohan comes in the kunja, Manjaris are starting to serve them intimately. But when the pastimes are going on in the river, let's say river Yamuna, then Manjaris are serving, watching, observing, bringing Radhika to Yamuna, helping them to meet. And it's not a place which is specially reserved for Manjaris at not Radha Kunda, because Manjaris are bringing Radhika also to Govardhan during deep night in some special cave. So Manjaris are always present because they are shadows of Radhika, like Gurudev said, and they are allowed to go everywhere And because without Radhika, they cannot survive. And Radhika desperately needs them, the most needs them. So this is some kind of explanation. Gurudev will give the more. Because we, when we are listening to the pastimes, we should be very careful. Are they are in the mood of Sakiba? Sanchari Bhav or are written or expressed in the mood of Manjari Bhav. For that reason, we should listen Vilapa Kusum Manjari because it's very, very clear. And it is the way how we can learn to think, to feel, and to act like a Manjaris. When these things become clear, then devotee automatically, naturally, he will know his place in Govardhan, in the pastimes of Govardhan, or daily pastimes, nightly pastimes, Yamuna pastimes, different forests. But by the mercy of our Prayojan Guru, Ragunath, Tulsi Manjari, we can receive the mercy for Manjari Baba, and we can receive the mercy of Rupa Manjari because we are in that line. Maybe different lines, they have some other approach, which is perfectly all right, but our lineage is very strongly connected to the Rupa Manjari and Rati Manjari. And Gurudev is begging us, he's not forcing us, but he's begging us 
please don't go around, take the shelter of Raghunath and Vilapa Kursu Manjali, because this is the only book when Manjari Bhava is completely clear. And then confusions or questions, or maybe when someone says something a uh, little bit different, actually for us, will be very, very clear. So I said this, maybe Gurudev is not satisfied, especially maybe you are not satisfied, I'm sorry. No, it's very clear. Rather, <laughs> rather, um, I just had one question about the. Uh, mm, the Leelas and um, yes, I will just <laughs> be open about my confusion. Um, so I'm just wondering, I am um, when I meditate on the Leelas, I do wonder, um, are the Leelas fixed? And then we in our meditation, we meditate on the Leelas we read about and then get a feeling for it? Or is it that we contribute to the Leelas by the feelings we meditate with? Does that make sense? Like, are the Leelas fixed? Was that clear? Radhe, Radhe, Mira. Gurudev. This again is putting me in situation to try to answer for my benefit and for my advancement at least. First, we have to establish ourselves and fix in Manjari Bhav, Stai Bhav. When it's clear, then other things will come spontaneously. And reading Vilapas Kusumanjali again is the only book and only Kripa meant for attaining this stay above, fixed position. And we should surrender to Raghunath, Krishna Yajana Acharya for that. If we try to go around, then it's good. But what will happen? We don't know. So by following the Vilapa Kusu Manjali, we will receive all necessary informations, all necessary feelings, all necessary art of serving. But in the same time, when we are listening to these pastimes described in Vilapa Kusu Manjali, we should always see ourselves like Manjali, very closed with our Guru Manjari. Then we can approach to other Manjaris, elder Manjaris, and so on and so on, and receive their mercy. So by the, through the meditation on Lila, the best thing is to find Anantadas Babaji somewhere is writing, <laughs> find the easiest way for your mind. And when he say, Easiest way, he thinks, find easiest lila for your mind, that you don't make any endeavor. And stop there. And meditate. And Gurudev is adding, and meditate. So this is the answer. Easy lila for yourself, not what others are saying. What is easy for them? For you. What, what is more attractive, sweet, beautiful, and stop on that place, and just meditate. Mm -hmm.
and feel it. Because, Gurudev is saying, feel it. Because meditation without feeling is not real meditation. We need feelings, but this kind of feelings has to be infused in our hearts by strong connection with our Guru Parampara. Radhe Radhe. To continue? <coughs> Srinaval Kishore Baba. There exists in Nandagram, in Braja, the temple of Nandalal, the son of Nanda, Krishna. It was in a very dilapidated condition about 150 years ago. The veranda in front of the temple was uneven and rugged. Nandalal thought that if the floor was reconstructed and made of smooth marble, he could be able easily to move about and play in it. This was a trifling matter for Nandalal, for he was the Lord and the creator and destroyer of the universe. His Lila Saki Yogamaya could fulfill his desire as soon as it appeared in his mind. But Yogamaya knew that her Lord had appeared in this incarnation, not as the Lord of the universe, but as the son of Nanda and Yashoda, as the friend of Sudama and Sudama, again, Sridam, probably, Sudam and Sridam, and the other cowards, and as the beloved of gopis, to reveal with them in love. His purpose in this incarnation was only to love and be loved. Therefore, in this incarnation, his lordliness, Aishwarya, was completely enveloped by his sweetness, Madhurya, or loveliness, and he depended for the fulfillment of his desires, not on Yogamaya, but on the loving service of his devotees. Accordingly, he began to wait for a suitable occasion where he could ask or inspire a devotee to do marble flooring in the veranda of the temple. In village Chandari Kanagala, in district Alavar of Rajasthan, there lived a Brahmin devotee 
whose name was Naval Kishore. He was initiated in Ramanuja Sampradaya and he worshipped Vishnu. His mother, Srimati Hira Devi, was a devotee of Nandalal. Nandalal was very kind to her. Once, when she fell down from a roof, he took her in his lap and saved her from suffering any injury. After this, she shifted to Nandagram and began to live there with Naval Kishore and his wife. She had lived in Nandagram only for a few months. When Nandala made her leave her physical body to accept her in his service in his transcendental town. Naval Kishore already had strong samskaras of bhakti, but after the death of his mother, his bhakti and vairagya became more intense. He went back to his village for a short while and returned after selling away his property and everything he had. He spent the money he brought in the service of the Sarus and Vaishnavas. One day he said to his wife, There are many thieves in Nandagram. They have an eye on, our, on your ornaments. Give me the ornaments so that I may keep them in safe uh, custody somewhere. She gave the ornaments to him. After some time, she asked him where he had kept the ornaments. He replied, They have gone to the treasury of Nandalal. She understood that the ornaments had also been sold and utilized in the service of Vaishnavas. She did not mind because she was also a devoted lady. Naval Kishore's Varagya went on increasing. He sent his wife to her father's house, took Vaishnav sannyas, and began to live on Madhukari. No one knew his new name as a sannyas. Therefore, people began to call him Naval Kishore Baba. Since Naval Kishore Baba was a Brahmin, he had strong samskaras of purity, impurity, touchability, and untouchability. Therefore, he did not accept cooked food in Madhukari. He accepted only food grains or flour. He cooked himself and ate after offering the food to Vishnu. While cooking, he took special care to see that not even the shadow of any other person fall upon the food he cooked. It is the habit of Nandalal to regard anyone related to his devotee as his own, whether he has any love or regard for him or not. Naval Kishore was the son of his devotee, Hira Devi. Therefore, he was as much his own as Hira Devi. He thought of asking him to make the marble floor in the temple. But he felt hesitant for two reasons. One reason was that although he regarded him as his own, he did not recognize any relationship with him. He often went to his temple for his darshan because he lived in Nandagaon, but he did not worship him as his Ista. His Ista Dev, his Ista Dev was Vishnu. The other reason was that Naval Kishore was too much obsessed 
by the Brahma, uh, Brahmanical rules and regulations of purity and impurity, which were repugnant to Raganuga Bhakti of Braja, in which the governing factor was love and not any rules and regulations of purity or impurity. Therefore, he thought of a uh, device to first bring about complete change in Naval Kishore in respect of both of these factors, which blocked the way of a loving relationship between him and Naval Kishore. One day, Naval Kishore went to the house of a Brajabasi woman for Madhukari. She went in to bring flour Her two sons, sitting in the veranda outside, were eating madheri, which is barley mixed with milk or curd, yogurt, from a pot. They were eating madheri from a pot. Navarkishore saw that Krishna and Balaram were also eating with them. They were eating with great relish from the same pot and looking jeeringly at him. He was surprised and stunned. He stood looking at them like one hypnotized. The woman came with flower and said, stretching her hand towards Baba, take Baba. But Baba had lost outward consciousness under the spell of the beauty of Krishna and Balaram. He could neither see the woman nor hear her voice. She said in a louder voice, Baba, why are you looking at my children like this? Take Madhukari and go. Baba then looked at her with a start. After thinking for a while, he said, Ma, not this flower. Give me a little Mahari from the pot from which the children are eating. What? said the lady, surprisingly. Have you gone mad? On other days, you did not accept anything cooked or touched by my children. And today you're asking for the remains of the Mahari eaten by them. It was natural for the lady to feel surprised. How could she know that during the short interval between her going and coming out, Baba Naval Kishore was completely metamorphosed. He was no more the staunch Brahmin who regarded anything touched even by the shadow of another man as impure and did not eat even the prashad of a deity. If it was cooked by another man, he had now understood that the Thakur, God of Raja, valued the purity of the heart, not the purity of things offered to him. He was the God of love and could be won over only by love, not by the observance of the rigid rules and regulations of purity and impurity of things. Baba said, Ma, I have not gone mad. My madness has now disappeared. Now, do not hesitate. Give me Mahari. As he said this, his throat was choked and tears rolled down his eyes. The lady thought Baba had truly gone mad. <clears throat> she kept standing and looking at him, but he jumped and took a handful of Mahari out of the pot. He was tastefully eating Mahari and swimming in the ocean of bliss. Tears of love and joy were coursing down his cheeks and drenching his chest. After this, 
Baba Naval Kishore's Upasana took a new turn. There was a volcanic disturbance in his heart. He began to think, I worshipped Vishnu so long, he did not give me darshan even once. But this Thakur of Raja blessed me with this darshan even though I never worshipped him. How kind, simple, and merciful is he. In the Upasana of Vishnu, there is an element of awe. He wants to be uh, revered and worshipped as God. But nonetheless, he is not even conscious, uh, is not even conscious of his divinity. He wants to love and be loved. He is not God but love. Vishnu sits on his altar, accepts from a distance the bhog offered by his devotee and leaves his remains for him. But the Thakur of Braj goes from door to door in Braja and eats the remains of the Brajavasis. Navalkishore found that the seat in his heart which was so far occupied by Vishnu, had been captured by Nandalal. <coughs> Even when he entered to meditate on Vishnu, Nandalal came up in his mind, not Vishnu. He now worshipped Vishnu only outwardly. Inwardly, he always thought of Nandalal. One day, when Naval Kishore was meditating in the courtyard of the temple of Nandalal, he saw that Nandalal was moving about in the veranda of the temple on all floors. From time to time, he stopped and began to rub his knees with his hand. While meditating, Naval Kishore fell into a nap. He heard in a dream Nandalal saying to him, Baba, my knees are bruised. This was unbearable to Naval Kishore. He decided that he would beg or borrow and have the floor of the temple paved with smooth marble as soon as possible. The next day he went to Makarana in Jodhpur state and begged from a big merchant for marble stones for the temple of Nandalal. The merchant said, take as many as you like. Nandalal asked me also in a dream yesterday to give the stones to you. During those days, there was no railway line from Jodhpur to Mathura. The stones had to be brought on bullock carts. Very soon, the temple of Nandalal, including the veranda, were paved with marble. On one of the walls of the temple was inscribed a verse describing how Nandalal inspired Naval Kishore to pave the floor of the temple with marble. After this, Naval Kishore Baba became famous as a Siddha Babaji, who enjoyed the favor of Nandalal and had the power to fulfill the desires of people by his blessings. He used these powers sometimes for the service of Nandalal. Once he went to Mathura with his disciple Yugal Kishore. He asked Yugal Kishore to go and beg for some ghee for the service of his Thakur. Yugal Kishore went to a shopkeeper and begged for ghee. The shopkeeper gave ghee but said, I have no child. Your Gurudev is a Siddha Mahatma. 
requesting on my behalf to bless me with a son. Yugal Kishor was by nature too simple and generous. He said, Well, well, I will tell him. You will have a son by his blessings. He reported everything to Naval Kishore. Naval Kishore was angry. He struck him with tongues on his back and said, Fool, you trade in my blessings. Go away from here. I do not want to see your face. Yugal Kishore fell at his feet. He begged for forgiveness and said, I shall never do that again. I shall go to the shopkeeper, return his gi and say, My Gurudev will not do anything for you. Naval Kishore's anger subsided, but he said, Now, since you have promised, Nandalal will certainly bless the shopkeeper with a song. But a shopkeeper has cheated you. He has given a little gi and taken a song. Now go and tell him that he will have to give rose water to Nandalal every day. The shopkeeper was happy to hear this. From the same day, he started offering rose water to Nandalal. And in due course of time, he had a son. After the birth of the son, that shopkeeper started a new firm for selling stones and other materials. The firm brand was named Nandala, uh, Nandal Kishore Yugal Kishore. The firm exists and is known by this name even today. <laughs> so now, <laughs> Can you repeat so the name? <coughs> Nandalal Kishore Yugal Kishore. Two names. Nandalal Kishore Yugal Kishore. <laughs> Set Bhagavan Das Berivala of Haryana was a wealthy merchant. He suffered great loss and his business were, was ruined. He went, he went to Nandagal, described his condition to Baba Naval Kishore and prayed for his mercy. Baba said, If you render service to Nandalal, your condition will improve. He began to serve Nandalal and his condition began to improve. The members of his family have been rendering service to Nandalal until this day. His grandson Ratanlal Berival renovated the temple of Nandalal and gave it its present form. <coughs> Naval Kishore used to prepare for Nandalal. 10 laddus every day with his own hands. Eight of them were kept for Nandalal breakfast the next day, and two were kept with Ma Yashoda to be given to him by her. This practice, which was started by Nanda Kishore, continues even today. Naval Kishore had Vatsalya Bhav towards Nandalal, but it changed into Madhurya Bhav. This is evident from one of his verses inscribed on the wall of the temple of Nandalal. Naval Kishore Baba's Samadhi assists at Aseshwara in Nandagal, where he used to do bhajan. On the Samari, its date is inscribed as Vikram 1937, which means 1880 of the Christian era. Shrinaval Kishore Baba Ki! Interesting, yeah? Yeah. I think Sai Bhavin 
parental affection but change to module yet. But how, how did they know they ch he changed? It's written here that there is some inscribed, but, something written on the stone of Nandagao temple. But he's not, he came not a uh, what he did that somebody could see, no? Here it says, Naval Kishore had Vatsalya Bhav towards Nandalal, but it changed into Madhurya Bhav. This is evident from one of his verses inscribed <coughs> on the wall of the temple of Nandalal. Mm -hmm. so, so it means he has written himself these verses. Right? Probably. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to go Nanda Gauna eh? this time. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can they might read Gopal and the Goswami. Mm. They might know yes. the where these verses are in the temple. Mm. <coughs> <coughs> I would like to say something. So it's interesting from these all three stories, but uh, one thing was evident from the last story uh, where it was mentioned about uh, purity or impurity. And usually this is connected with ritualistic purity. So lots of devotees who are coming from societies or groups where this ritualistic purity is a must, mm -hmm. uh, we can see, and we, we talk with them a lot, uh, that they are blocked by this concept of ritualistic purity. And usually they cannot do any seva or even meditate because they are blocked by feeling that they are not allowed to do anything connected with seva if they are not pure even if it's not upon them that they cannot for example take bath or uh, i don't know they are sick or women are in period you know this uh, ritualistic purity is uh, blocking them to do anything so it's beautiful to hear this, that only love is what we need. You know, of course, cleanliness and purity is okay, but not on that level that blocks us in our connection with Radha Mohan. So we need to do it, do it, of course. We need to be healthy. Food needs to be clear, uh, healthy, you know, and not uh, contaminated with anything dirty. But the point is that it shouldn't block us in our connection with Radha Mohan. That's the point. And usually this uh, ritualistic purity is not even spiritual. It's materialistic. Why I'm, why I'm saying this? Because it's mostly connected with body. Because what I noticed, people who are obsessed with ritualistic purity, you can hear only about body from them. Everything that they say, it's connected just with body. And only focus is on the body. Body needs to be like this, like that decorated, like that uh, uh, cleaned. You need to use left, uh, right hand, not left hand, this, that, this, that, you know, many things which are connected with the body. And their focus is on that not focus on seva. And we can see an example from the second story about uh, Radhakund Vrajavasis, how they are thinking Radhakund is theirs, and because they are born there, so Radhakund is theirs, but actually Radhakund is from Radhika. You know, and lots, lots of time people try to uh, put limitations or ownership on Radha and Krishna, you know, they are thinking like, oh, we are born in India, oh, Radha and Krishna are ours. I heard many times <laughs> this, that Radha and Krishna are Indians. No, they're not. 
<laughs> you know? Yeah. Or uh, this example from Jagannath Puri Temple, you know, that only Indian people can go into Jagannath Puri Temple. This is totally from, at least uh, if you see from spiritual point, it's a materialistic view. But okay, I can understand. In all the stories, we know that Radha and Krishna, they are making things happen so that we can learn something or even progress. We, we, we understand that uh, it's nothing by accident, you know. Even if we come to some group, which is not maybe totally ours, we learn something that we can move toward our group. I can say from my example that I would not change anything in my life if I could go back, because then I would not be here today. That's, that's my point. So even if some groups are not in connection with how it's today, but they were important in my, some part of my life. So we went through ritualistic purity, many ritualistic things, but why? To learn the difference, to understand the difference. We came yesterday from Croatia, where, is, where it was minus one, you know, and you come here in summer. So quickly we can see the difference, you know. <laughs> Mahalo, you want to say more? No. Thank you. Can I? Yeah. Now they, uh, you spare me just something uh, in connection to what another y'all just explained. Um, just some kind of uh, point of view that I think all this purity and impurity and all the regulations is much to do about uh, with the Vaishnav etiquette, which is, as you say, connected to our Sadak Deya. And of course, even in Sadak Deya here, we have in the meditation that we are in a Gora Lila, right? That we are just living the Gora Lila. And so etiquette, Vaishnava etiquette uh, is not in a way that is helping us in our relation uh, to Radha Krishna, but is very important in our relation with the devotees, like what we just live mostly when we are in an ashram. I think that the main teaching here of Naval Kishore, what, uh, I mean, Krishna directly wanted to give to him, he was a very Siddhamatma, so uh, Krishna was just instructing him, uh, giving him the darshan, that the relation that one has with the Histadev that should be free from all kinds of awe and reverence and all these things. That should not be the predominant uh, aspect of their relation in Raganuga Sadaka, obviously. But on the other side, I think that as Vaishnavas having Sadak Deya and mostly in the connection with the relation that we have also with all other devotees, mostly maybe when we live in an ashram and not just uh, at home. There are something which also is important and prevent us to make offenses. Like if we take another Das Babaji, also is teaching on the Sadak Deya, apart from uh, uh, Siddha Deya, what we can find like in uh, Prambhakti Chandrika, Madhurya Karambini, he explains so many detail about how there are different behavior, let's call them, because when we say offenses, sounds kind of religious thing, but behaviors or, or manners, that if you are careful to uh, do that properly, mostly in the relation with the devotees, in connection with the devotees, then they will help a lot to also have a clean bhajan. But if we are not careful on that, like mm, about our behavior, how I'm behaving with uh, Jayananda Maharaj, which is my elder. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> because I think, oh, love is the main, of course, you know, but with this Sadak Deya, he's my elder. <laughs> that I have to, that I have to, uh, um, 
<laughs> to realize that and, 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 and it's the truth, you know? So it's okay that love is the main, but uh, my attitude should be like to do Dandava to him, not he to me. Just one example I'm giving because you're here nearby. Just one small example, you know? So all these things which regards the Sadak day, of course, Vaishnava etiquette, but they really help. And uh, I don't remember who, but it was not an Antatas Baba. You say that actually in a devotee society, let's call, you know, just on the outward uh, platform, Sadak Dea. A devotee who does not know any uh, etiquette is just a, a kind of disturbance for the devotee society. So I think, yeah, love is the main, of course, in the aspect of bhajan and our relation with uh, uh, Istadev, but also on the Sadak Dea platform. Uh, some rules and regulations and Vaishnava etiquette my opinion i think is also important <laughs> so like two different somehow you know not to mix them there are two different uh things I, we just see gurudev how he's he, he could be like he's a siddha matma right we all are, agree on this here and how he's careful actually in his etiquette and behavior like when you're taking money sometimes gurudev is giving 500 rupees to you or 100 to pay some uh, beggar which come here in the temple. And if you take with the left hand, you would say, no, take with the right hand. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, you know, like uh, Gurudev is actually the first who is showing this example here of how with the Sadak Dea one uh, follow the etiquette and all these things. And of course, in the inside, it's just full of love for the own Istadev and you know, the Vaishnavas, but yeah, I think. It's clear the point. So. Of course, uh, I mean this. This what you said is usually sorry, uh, connected with the culture. You know, like uh, this example, taking le uh, with the right hand, not the left hand, because we can understand that many societies in world have maybe different opinion. You know, some are saying take it with the left hand, not the right hand. So this is called monton. We say you know that that you are uh, culture. Yeah, that. Uh, you are acting correctly in accordance to, to the culture, you know, where you are. Between the Vaishnavas, you are acting in that way that is accepted. To be to, cultured, in yeah. a cultured way, to be yeah. not to offend anyone. Yeah, not to offend anyone, to, to be cultured, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, just uh, this is, how you said, connected with Sita Deha, yes. And it's important, of course. It's important because Sadak Deha. Sadak Deha. Sorry, Sadak Deha. Yeah, and it is important. No, what I said before, I didn't thought to uh, yeah, yeah, imply that it's not important. No, no, I was just to say. Yeah. To prevent sometimes the thought that come, uh, other body say, okay, just love is important. Yeah. I don't care about this. I don't care about that. Oh no. That sometimes can happen. <laughs> not, not to, of course. Uh, yeah. Not, but sometimes can happen. Oh, just love is important. But also we have to see. Where I'm standing. Uh, where sorry, in, in a way, that is also yeah. showing love. You know, in that way. You keep, keep that. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. In, in that way, uh, we are also showing love and respect. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's also love. Like you're saying to Jayananda, you care how he feels. That's why you act a certain way towards him, with respect and love. So it's also love. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 There's no Maharaj say no, many times that outwardly one may look very but uh, <laughs> outwardly one may look very bhakta, but inside is Raghunuga bhakta. So the intention is different. But or Prabhupada also say that Vaishnavas are like the first uh, first class gentleman or gentle lady. So that's that should be like the uh, kind of concept you see. Kesha Baba also how he behaves. Mainly all the great personalities how they behave basically. On the outward also uh, Pakka. Say Pakka, no? Like perfect. <laughs> that always prevent to make any offense and so on. Yeah. Rade, Rade. Um I just think that you know in an international setting like this when we are all coming from so many different cultures and then adding on top of that, we have all 
many different emotional states and we are on different consciousness levels so we also have to realize that we are all in our progress on our personal evolution through this journey and um, i think that in the essence for sure love is the juice it's the core of it all but if we are gonna as a society or like a community somehow talk to each other and not past each other not talk past each other but talk and meet each other there is some place for some common understanding and um, i think that baya said it very nicely that if the focus is too much on the regulations then one loses the sight of what is the purpose but if one is very like you know happy go lucky hippie style then this can also create chaos and more distractions and more conflict and in this way i feel that we are so all so lucky and i personally feel so blessed to meet you all and to be in gurudev's presence because he shows us the way so nicely um i have learned so many cultural codes through him but before it was hard to understand it is cultural but yeah i just wanted to highlight this point okay rada 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 now from all of you that whatever all what all of you said somehow comes down the conclusion that balance is important right balance between expressing love and expressing cultural uh, being cultured or, or manners good manners <laughs> so balance harmony thank you Now I'm going to turn the hands off. So, uh, I was a little bit impressed with this kind of behavior, some Radha Kunda's uh, Bengali version of the behavior. Brajabashi Bhashnava said, you cannot enter Radha Kunda. And then they accept, okay, we accept if Radha Rani want us to not enter. So I was impressed. And also we had the same experience. Because uh, previous society, we are, we, we, we are forbidden to not to enter Radha Kunda. We just touch the maybe three drop. And then I was wondering because Upadesha Murita, Rupa Goswami mentioned as much as possible we should bathe. And then slowly, slowly my understanding become, become a little bigger. This is a very personal thing. If we have a kind of greed, for, for you know something. This 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 also different. Maybe you know story is different. But in our case, why Prabhupada prohibited? So slowly, slowly, I could understand. And uh, so each devotee has different feeling, also different stage. And also Gurudev see our stage. You should do do this. You should not do this. I think that is we should follow. Sometimes Guru Dev say, you know, this time we should not bathe Radha Kunda because of, you know, many, many panda, many devotee, and then many, some disturbance may happen. You should not just touch that goal. Sometimes Guru Dev say like this. Sometimes we say, you know, Guru Dev today, you know, this devotee is very eager to bathe, you know, is okay? Yeah, okay. Sometimes like this. 
and then and give some specific instruction. So it's better to do this, do that. So anyway, so this bhakti is very deep because by the accept external aspect, also internal aspect. Also time, place, and circumstance, and person. Also according to Guru Dev's instruction. So therefore, we cannot say this is absolute. Say Goranga Sundraji explained very nicely. So, but uh, Mahanidhi was saying, very subjected. Means each, each person has a different relationship with the Lord. Leader may be different, differentiated, different. Sometimes we confuse because, you know, if we read Bhagatam, or Chai Chai Charitamita, many dealers or many books, many dealers is different way described. So if we think this is absolute, and then, oh, this dealer is not good, this is not good, we may material thinking like this. But the good them sometimes saying, we should appreciate all feeling. Also, all, all pastime also, because very much subjected. For example, we, we, we go to everyday Mongolatic, for example. Or we eat every, everyday lunch prasada. But sometimes time is different. Sometimes distributing parts is different. Sometimes the food is different, different variety of food. So this is very, you know, so many, and Dira also, many devotees thinking. I also, I was thinking, why Radha Kunda is highest? But slowly, slowly I understand. My, my understanding may, may be wrong. But uh, my feeling like this. Radha Kunda is only Madhurya Baba. But uh, in Brindavan, many leaders is mixing. Even Yamuna mixing. So in that sense, Radha Kunda is the highest. But if we see day, day to day is Nitya Lira, Radha Kunda is noontime Lira. Nyamuna is many Lira, but especially intimate Lira is nighttime. So for some person, prefer to this Jamuna Lira. This very personal thing. For example, so if we meditate Mongolatic, what kind of situation they are, where they are staying, Kunja. This each person may be different. I sometimes feel, oh, you know, Radha Mohan and Yamuna, near Yamuna Kunja. You know, they are, they are going to Jabat and Nandagaon. So therefore, if we see different past perspective, for especially for Manjari Baba, which one is the highest? Some some person some some person who has Baba, Basera Baba, which one is the highest? Even say Saki Baba, which is the highest, or Manjari Baba, which one is the highest? This may be different from each each person. So this is, you know, for me, very easy to understand this why Yamuna Lira, why you are, why you are trying to med you know, meditate and writing. For me, very easy to access, you know, accessible. Because sometimes I also same feeling, same meditation. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. This, uh, these are such beautiful topics. And I just want to add, I, maybe I'm wrong, but I want to share how me personally, how I see, how I feel about Radakund. Um, my personal uh, feeling about Radakund is that this is Radharani herself in this liquid form, that this is Radhika and her presence and her love. And if I take bath in Radakund, of course, I, I never did that in my life. I just took water on my head. But my feeling is that I take, if I take Radakund bath, is I'm connecting, uniting with Radharani, and uh, he, I'm taking shelter of Radhika in this way. So in, in a Manjari mood, is like you get into the Radhakund to take embrace and take shelter of Radhika and her mercy. So it, maybe it could be viewed in that way also. Sure, because, you know, because uh, I, I maybe... I'm because, uh, oh sorry, Radha Kundas, near Radha Kunda, or in the Radha Kunda, many Kunja there. Then our Ananga Manjari Kunja also there. So, in that sense, for us, very dear also. And uh, also related to these lilas near Yamuna, for somehow uh, in my case, it's not that I consciously choose to, you know, whether I will go there and what will happen. It's not up to me. I'm, I'm just um, like a passive observer. I'm just witnessing what is given to me. It's not that I choose, like, aha, now today I'm going to go to Yamuna, and this is Yamuna. No, I don't even know what, why I'm there, what is going on, just observe what is happening. And I just see river, and I assume that this could be Yamuna. What else? River is there. <laughs> and then um, it's like things are just opening up in some way, and uh, like a puzzle. I collect information because I see river, I feel fragrance, I see some interesting things going on. And then Lavangalatika sends me a picture where she started painting Yamuna. And then I said, wow, this is the same thing that I just saw. And then this is another piece of the puzzle that comes like, aha, that must be Radha and Krishna are next to the Yamuna. So these things are not given to us, are not there because we choose, but these are some drops of mercy that we just observe, and they are there. Uh, it's not that we um, decide on those things. So it's not up to me, it just happens, so I can't help it, you know, <laughs> it's there. So. I, I've been uh, put there, and that's what you get, you know, you have to accept it. <laughs> um, that's how I see it, you know. It's like, like uh, everything is guided, and we are put in a certain place where we are needed, pr probably at that particular moment, right? So thank you very much. Very nice sharing. So Shudlal Maya is, is gone. So now Arctic time, Radha Mohan is calling. Thank you very much, Radha Radha.